Hey everybody, it's Rothbard's Disciple here. I know it's been a while since I made a video. I've just been really busy and I've been switching back into, uh, like I've, I've been getting started writing again because I've been excited actually about some of the tokenization things that are coming out with Bitcoin. And like I said, it's been a while since uh, I've written that much. And uh, part of it was because none of the tokenization stuff was coming out. And a lot of the things that I write, I want to tokenize. Um, so now that the tokenization stuff seems to be looking pretty good, I'm actually getting excited about writing again and so I've been getting back into writing but uh, one thing I wanted to talk about today is the uh, the murderous mining attack and proving the profit of it a lot of people really don't understand it which really I don't know it, it makes me feel sad <laughs> um, especially because Bitcoin's an economic system and uh, if I'm right on this attack it means that I'm you know sort of the foremost expert on Bitcoin as far as the economics of it goes which is sort of embarrassing because like, who the fuck am I? But, uh, anyways, I want to prove the math of this to you guys because it's remarkably insane how much money you can make from this murderous mining attack. And I didn't do the math for people because I fucking figured, you know, hey, somebody's going to at least do it. They're not, all, they're not all idiots, but I guess they are all idiots. That's one truth of Bitcoin. Like, seriously, guys, if you want to learn this stuff, you just got to sometimes create a fake problem a fake scenario in your head and do basic math like the math i'm going to show you guys it's literally all like third grade shit if you if you pass third grade you can do it yeah this is and this is by far the most dangerous thing to bitcoin you know everyone tries to seem all super smart and intelligent like emin grun Serer and it y'all with their little selfish mining paper and it turns out selfish mining is not really much of a threat because selfish mining can be stopped by selfish mining you know, like, what a what a fucking attack. Like, it, it stopped by itself. Oh, man. What a great attack. And these guys get invited to conferences and shit. And I'll show you guys this by far. Murderous mining. It's it's literally a third grade level attack. You can, like, any fucking idiot can do it. All you need is hash power. That's it. Okay? So let's let's talk about it. Now, the one thing that people keep telling telling me about my attack is they're like oh when bitcoin reaches global scale you can't uh, you can't attack it because then all the incentives work perfectly and it's like nope nope that's exactly when the incentives are all fucked up okay why is why are the incentives all fucked up the incentives are all fucked up because the block reward on bitcoin is linked to the throughput this uh like at first glance this sort of makes sense but you you don't determine how much new gold is going to be created by how much gold is transacted with and anyways in bitcoin you're not actually creating new bitcoin okay it's a static amount of bitcoin there's never in the history of mankind been a currency used that has a static amount now i've had conversations with craig wright about this and his answer is that you can create new sort of uh basically new money with bonds and things like that so his idea is basically bitcoin's a debt instrument to some extent it's like you know i'd really prefer commodity money to debt money but if you guys really want debt money i guess that's your thing it's just you know markets prove that that's not really what they want um you know i don't know how craig wright as someone who's read mises and talks about mises all the time can advocate for a non-commodity money when like within every goddamn book that Mises writes on money on money he specifically states that um, there is a positive benefit to the market creation of new money or new gold so when new gold is mined out of the ground which is inflation which Bitcoin doesn't have long term just for you idiots who don't understand this okay so when new gold is mined Mises says that's a good thing because that actually facilitates the creation of new goods. It's only when you inflate beyond the actual market creation of, uh, or the market inflation or whatever. Because market inflation is not actual inflation. That's just creation of new money. And that's actually a positive thing. You don't want that much new money created so the market will never choose as money something that has a very high production rate. But uh, Mises has always said, like in literally every book the goddamn man has written, he talks about the positive effect of the creation of new money by the market. Okay? And so this is the, this is the weakness you attack within Bitcoin. And the way you attack it is because um, uh, the block reward on Bitcoin is linked to throughput. Uh, and you can block throughput with a 51% attack. You just do a 51% attack and block throughput. And if you do the math here, we're going to do the math. You can do year-long denial of service attacks if you assume that the attack goes very poorly and it's very poorly planned and very 
poorly done. But if you assume things go very well, uh, you can attack Bitcoin with a denial of service attack for decades uh, with a profit that you stand to make. Okay, decades, guys, decades. That's over 10 years. Do you really think Bitcoin can survive if it, somebody just turns the switch off for 10 years? No. <laughs> <coughs> it cannot. Okay, so let's look at this. Assume Bitcoin has the market cap of $21 trillion. That's $1 million per Bitcoin. That's basically what everyone hoped it to get when it was first created. You know, that's that was like M1 when it was first created, the money supply of the world. You know, that's basically as big as it can get. So assume there's 4 billion transactions per block at a... You know, that's one-tenth of a cent fee per transaction. So that's $4 million block reward per block. That's also about, like, the holy grail for mining. It means you can have massive mining at an industrial scale, no problemo. Okay, so if you have $4 million per block, that's 144 blocks per day. Um, four times 144, that's $576 million daily. Uh, that's $210 billion yearly. Okay, so that's how much money is going to be spent extracting those Bitcoin. Now, technically speaking, those miners probably want to profit, so they're not actually going to spend $210 billion. They're going to spend less than that, but we're going to just say it's $210 billion just because, um, like we said, we're going to make the math worse for my argument, and we're going to show you. Uh, it doesn't matter how bad you make the math for my argument uh, and for my strategy, it is still profitable as fuck. Um, there's no denying this. So now you got to also look at murder coin. So like with, with murder coin and with the, the, the murderous mining attack strategy, all you do is you create a coin where the block reward is instead linked to uh, difficulty. So as difficulty rises, so does the block reward. Um, there's diminishing returns to this. Um, we're not going to go over finding an actual equation for this because there's no way to find the actual equation. You have to, or find the best equation for this. You just release a bunch of different equations, release them into the market, uh, and whichever one outcompetes the others on the market, you go with that one, okay? Um, and again, the, the equation has to be mathematical in nature. You can't have a person dictating what the block reward is. It has to be um, set in stone as some sort of mathematical equation that never gets changed, okay? Um, and so, because we're not going over the equation, we don't need to worry about that. All we need to worry about are a couple of factors. The factors that matter are the market cap of murder coin and its inflation rate. Uh, and the reason why those matter is, again, you build up murder coin until your uh, until the block reward, your yearly block reward, is equivalent to that of Bitcoin. And so, in this example that we have here, we're going to go with murder coin having a market cap of one fifth that of Bitcoin. And so that means that its inflation rate needs to be at five percent because uh, even though in Bitcoin doesn't actually have inflation, uh, the block reward is equivalent to the block reward of an inflation rate at 1% if you had, or if Bitcoin did have inflation. Um, so your inflation rate actually needs to be, you know, basically uh, whatever the ratio is between your market cap and Bitcoin. So if you're one-fifth the size of Bitcoin, your inflation rate needs to be 5%. If you're one-tenth the size of Bitcoin, your inflation rate needs to be 10%. Okay, and so that's basically the way it works. And that's another thing that actually sort of limits attacks with this uh, attack strategy is because a lot of people would say, well, what happens for, uh, or what stops someone from coming later with a coin that has a higher inflation rate? Well, the market doesn't like money with high inflation rates so there's two limiting factors on both sides and this is the thing that you need with your money is you need market forces acting on both sides the problem with bitcoin is that uh the fact that there's no uh like the inflation's just at zero um you've completely ruined the way that the market works by ending how or by not allowing the market to affect the supply okay and so now market only affects demand and it, it's a real weird system that they have but anyways if you have the murder coin ha having a market cap of 4.2 trillion and the inflation rate of five percent your yearly uh block reward is going to be equivalent to 210 billion dollars yearly again so it's equivalent to that of bitcoin uh the, the other thing that uh you got to look at is how much the uh the miners own because again when you attack bitcoin Bitcoin, uh, even though like your, your attack doesn't actually profit you itself, the attack doesn't make you profit. It's just that you're going to attack Bitcoin and do a complete denial of service attack to kill Bitcoin, and then absorb some of Bitcoin's market share. So you only make money after absorbing the market share. So you have to be an owner of the coin in order to uh, uh, 
make money on this attack. And the other thing that's really good about the incentives of this type of a coin is that a lot of people look at this coin and be like, why would I want to invest in it if uh, the more hash rate there is, the more or the higher the inflation rate is. So there's a high inflation rate, so that means the returns will be less. Uh, this means that it's easy for miners to actually gain a higher percentage ownership of the coins. And uh, with Bitcoin Cash, the miners own something like 20 to 30 percent, or if not more, uh, you may, they might even own up to 50 percent. Um, who really knows? But if you just took, take Craig Wright, Roger Veer, and uh, Bitmain, um, you know, those guys alone own almost 15 percent. That's three people, <laughs> or not three people, three entities to some extent. But anyways, um, if you assume the miners of this murder coin only own 10%, which like we said, it, it'll be easier for miners to own this coin because of the incentives of it. Um, but if you assume they only own 10%, uh, all you have to do is absorb 20% of Bitcoin and your profit from the attack will be $420 billion. And the reason why you get this number is because, again, 20% uh, of Bitcoin, uh, 21% trillion, 20% of 21 trillion is 4.2 trillion. If the miners own 10% of all the murder coins and uh, murder coin absorb 20% of Bitcoin, which is 4.2 trillion, and 10% of that goes to the miners, then 10% of 4.2 trillion is 420 billion. Okay, and so 420 billion is equal to a two-year DOS attack, and that means the miners of murder coin can attack um, Bitcoin for two years, and so long as they're successful, they're more profitable than if they would have mined honestly on their own coin. Think about how stupid that is. Now, let's let's test some other scenarios just to uh, talk about how crazy some of these attacks can get. Okay? So, again, we're talking about uh, Bitcoin, which let's assume Bitcoin still has this market cap of $21 trillion. You would think Bitcoin would be insulated from attacks from coins that are much smaller. Like, let's say a coin that is uh, 33 times smaller, right? You would think it would be insulated. But it's not. Absolutely, it's not. In fact, uh, the most profitable ways to do these attacks are when you are so much smaller because that's when you can get sort of your propaganda machines running and you can make the attacks look terrible for Bitcoin and make your coin just look like the big daddy of them all. You can just be the big bad boy of crypto who kills all the people who stands in its way, you know. And so let's look at this, uh, this attack for murder coin when you have a market cap of just 636 billion. So that's uh, 33 times smaller than what Bitcoin would be at when it's at 21 trillion. Okay, so remember, Bitcoin has a market cap of 21 trillion. Murder coin has a market cap of 636 billion. The question is, is can like is it possible for murder coin to mount an attack? Uh, and the answer is yes. Uh, the inflation rate has to be sort of high, but it's not actually, it doesn't actually have to be, um, you know, like stupidly high to the extent that um, like it's infeasible, okay? So the inflation rate has to be approximately 33%. So a lot of coins that come out, uh, like the first few years, uh, if they follow Bitcoin's inflation schedule, they actually are at about 33% for a couple of their first years for like years one, two, three. And, or uh, technically speaking, year one, you, it's hard to say what the inflation rate is because you don't really have many coins that already existed. But anyways, um, yeah, the inflation rate uh, at 33% is easily doable within crypto and hitting 636 billion within a year or so, um, although, or not within a year or so, or w within the early years when your inflation rate is still very high, it, that is very much easily possible, okay? Uh, you could see that happening later on within Bitcoin, um, but it can be done. Obviously, it's not the simplest thing to do, but if you assume that the inflation rate on this coin, and the other thing too is that since the, the uh, block reward on murder coin is linked to the difficulty, you have no idea, like if you actually, uh, it depends on what your equation is, um, but it's very easy to see an inflation rate of 33%, even if you have a logarithmic scale, because uh, the hash rate on Bitcoin basically like quadruples every year, if not more, uh, and so, your inflation rate is going to be very high if you link your block reward to inf your inflation rate. Like I said, there's diminishing returns, so it would actually have to your your hash rate would probably have to rise higher than quadrupling every year to have an inflation rate of 33%. But whatever, like an inflation rate of 33% within a coin that links the block reward to the difficulty can easily happen, and that's not actually a bad thing um, because, like we've seen with Bitcoin, you see these massive swings in price, and these massive swings in price murder all the newcomers. You know, like we're just bankrupting all these. New newcomers and idiots and so we're shooting ourselves in the foot 
uh, when we do this. So if we had a higher inflation rate, this would sort of, you know, soften the blows and the volatility of the market, you know, if your inflation rate was determined by market forces. Um, but again, in this case, if your inflation rate is this high, you can also assume that the miners own a shitload of the coins um, because it has to be early on. And obviously, if your inflation rate is 33% of the coins, a lot of the coins are going to your miners. So if you assume miners own 40% of the coins, inflation rate is 33%, and you have a market cap of $636 billion, and you uh, furthermore assume that 3% of Bitcoin is going to be assume, or s absorbed into murder coin, uh, the total profit that you can get from this attack is $252 billion. So you can do a 1.2 year denial of service attack on Bitcoin. Okay, so think about how stupid that would be. Imagine if MurderCoin actually did this attack on Bitcoin. Now, again, you're only assuming that 3% of Bitcoin gets absorbed into or gets absorbed into MurderCoin. Okay, I don't know how you can have a scenario where a coin that is only at $636 billion for its market cap could attack another coin that has $21 trillion market cap for over a year and not absorb more than 3%, okay? So if you, whatever ratio you want to increase that profit by or that absorption of Bitcoin by, like let's say, you know, you absorb 10% of Bitcoin, um, well, then you've just tripled the profit on it and now you can, you know, increase the, the length of the denial of service attack, okay? So, like, the profits from this are stupid high, okay? Even if we, I keep assuming bad things for each one of these scenarios. But, it, it, like, if you go back to scenario number one, like, why would you expect Bitcoin to exist if it had a two-year denial of service attack done on it, okay? And even if, you know, you don't absorb 100% of Bitcoin initially, like, all the other coins that exist, all those people, they're going to jump ship because they're going to look at this and they're going to be like, hey, the only one that's going to survive is the one that killed Bitcoin, Okay, that's the winner. And so it's very hard to imagine a scenario where you don't become as big as the coin that you kill. Not because, like, because obviously you're going to destroy a lot of wealth in doing so, but everyone basically by default has to come to you. Otherwise, you will destroy them as well. So I don't, like, the more realistic scenario would be the same scenario as number one, the first one we went through, but you absorb 100% of Bitcoin. And so in that scenario, your, your profit is $2.1 trillion, okay? If we have miners who own, you know, 10% of the coin supply, uh, you know, absorb 100% of the coin you kill, or at least, you know, eventually you'll get to the same size as the coin that you killed. Uh, your profit from that is $2.1 trillion, okay? So when people keep telling me, like, Oh, you can't profit from attacking Bitcoin. Yeah, you can. You just got to get creative, you dumb fox. Like, I don't know. This shit's simple to me. It's simple to me. But uh, this is the real attack. This is the real fear for Bitcoin. It's murderous mining. Selfish mining's dog shit. You know, selfish mining was, uh, hey, what's the defense against selfish mining? Oh, everybody else selfish mines. It's like it, it defeats itself. It's it's a juvenile attack. This is the real deal. And the thing that I think is funny about this is this isn't complicated. Anybody who's passed the third grade can do this math. Okay, you guys just run through the numbers yourselves. Rewatch this video. All you need to know is, um, you know, what you expect the transaction volume on Bitcoin to be, and that gives you, uh, and then what you expect transaction fees on Bitcoin to be, and then that gives you. Uh, that gives you your barrier to entry. That's how much money you have to spend on hash power to attack Bitcoin. And so then you just do, you just mess with the inflation rate on your coin. You know, you just mess with the equation and so that your block reward is linked to your difficulty. You do a full on attack on the coin and you just kill its mining profitability and then you absorb it. It's, it's literally that simple. Um, and again, a, a lot of people are going to say, well, what happens if uh, someone just creates a coin with a higher inflation rate than yours and tries to kill it? Well, again, the market ha like the market will punish any coin that over the long term has too high of an inflation rate. And that's also why I said in these um, cases where the inflation rate, rate was really high, like this case where we took where you have an inflation rate of 33%, which again is completely possible for a coin that has a $636 billion market cap because you can get much bigger than that. But as it gets bigger, the inflation rate is going to get toned down a little bit. But um, the market will not accept a coin with too high of an inflation rate. So this attack, it's bounded on all sides by market forces. And this is what I just keep telling you guys is that when Satoshi put a quota in there for the supply of Bitcoin, he doomed it to failure. Um, and there's no escape from this. Socialism fails. And Bitcoin is, by definition, socialist. The most important thing about money is uh, its supply. Um, this is what another thing Mises always talks about. People always, when you're talking about money, you talk about the sort of money, price of money or whatever. 
I don't. I I know I'm not using the right terms there, but uh, the price of money is the important thing, and so the supply of money is the important thing. And Satoshi, you know, handed over the supply of Bitcoin to socialism, and so because of that, it will fail. But anyways, uh, that's the end of this video. Uh, it went a lot longer than I actually meant it to, but I hope I explained it to you, and I hope you guys understood the math.